Hello, here we go again. <clears throat> okay. First question here is from Ryan. What technology or field of technologies would you like to see developed before you kick the bucket? And he goes on. It's the most interesting question I like to ask SF authors. Charles Stross once told me that he wanted life extension just to move the question's goalposts. Yeah, that's fairly obvious. I completely agree with Charles Stross on that. Um, the thing is about all the wonderful future technologies that are going to turn up, um, being dead rather gets in the way of you seeing them. So, life extension please, that would do me fine. Next question. <clears throat> <clears throat> Fader 209 Is there any way that we can read your other short stories mentioned on your site which were published in magazines? Or have you got another short story collection lined up like the gavel? Um, you can find them scattered about. They're in, um, they're in things like Oh, these here the year's best SF yeah year's best SF um, it looks like this one from Garden of the Zoys yeah oh they're, scat they're scattered through all sorts of um, anthologies like that so uh, you just have to hunt around on the internet um, for those that don't know about them as well I mean there's the the engineer recondition which is a collection of short stories also runcible tales which is a chapbook but it's um, quite thin there's only about six or seven short stories in it and there's one or two free ones on the internet which you can find by applying Google right Hitch next. Not quite sure where this question came from, but Gaiman has written for it. Reynolds loves it. Will we ever see a Doctor Who episode penned by Asher? You even watch, enjoy the new Who. And then he says, I have to say, I think an Asher penned episode or two of Doctor Who would be something to behold. Um, just just finished watching the um, first series of the new Doctor Who. Um, we both quite enjoyed the uh, Christmas episode, but the new series very much like the Doctor Who, but didn't much like the um, didn't much like it. I must admit, I haven't been heavily into Doctor Who ever since um, Christopher Eccleston left it. So. Uh, would I pen one? No, I, I mean, I don't like writing in other people's universes, if you like. It, um, I find something oppressive about it. It doesn't, how can I say, the ideas don't come out for me if I'm writing in somebody else's, um, something that somebody else has visualised. Uh, I have tried it and it hasn't worked out very well. Next one. I'm probably going to get this wrong as well. Mr. Miego. Sorry if I did get that wrong. Do you have any stories that you'd like to write? Well, I've got loads. Um, I think that's the only answer I can give. I've got loads of them. Uh, new ideas turn up all the time, so yes, I've got plenty. Graham, do you ever start writing stuff, then bin it or bench it, like our man Tolkien did? Well, yes. Um, as people who have read my blog before or know anything about the things that I've done, um, would know. I've got a fantasy trilogy that I wrote many, many years ago. Um, I've also got the first book of the next trilogy. I've also got a contemporary novel 
all of these are um, just sitting on the files. I, um, I know that they'll need a fair bit of work before I can actually try to get them published. I do have numbers of short stories, um, which I wrote very early on, and every now and again I'll, I'll go through them again and make some corrections and so forth. And sometimes I'll send them off, but I mean I still have lots sitting in my files that I don't. I'm just not that interested in. Um, yes, a lot gets binned and benched. But I must admit that. Um, It's not so much bin, put to one side. I mean, even when I'm editing a book, and I'll chop if I chop sections out, I'm thinking, oh no, I don't need that. I would have covered it from a different direction. I'll move them to a, a file, a file of bits, which is actually called bits at SF, which I might return to on occasion if I'm if I want some ideas or something to use to start to tell a short story. Next one. Angry Murloc. Has there been any recent sci-fi, be it literature, movies or TV shows, um, that have had an impact on your writing and stories? Recent. Depends what you mean by recent. Um, not really much recent stuff, but then I haven't seen much recent stuff that's been a lot of good. Um, biggest impact I think from movies would be things like, well, the old ones like Blade Runner, um, Alien, Aliens, um, a lot of the Schwarzenegger movies, Predator, Terminator, TV shows, not a lot. Not having much of an impact anyway. Oh, well, no. We defined it as sci-fi, so I can't actually um, include anything else. Though I will. I mean, I would say that watching shows like Twenty Four have had uh, an impact on my writing. Um, literature, not a lot. I think a lot of the literature, though, a lot of the science fiction that I've read had its initial impact, um, but then I've moved away from it as I've gone my own way. I think that's the way an awful lot of writers start out. They start out by aping the people that they love to read, but then they develop their own style and move on. Um, next one. Variant 13. Now that the polity universe is well established, do you find it easier to come up with ideas for what will happen next in your stories? Um, well, generally, I find it easy to come up with ideas anyway. Um, but with the polity universe being well established, what that actually does is constrict um, what I can do next because of what has happened. Um, because of the technologies I've already described, which are current or whatever. I mean, for example, if um, if I want to write a story back in the polity universe, like when I wrote uh, Pray the Moon, um, there are certain things in that era of the polity that were develop that weren't developed. Certain things that will appear in much later things, like in the um, and certain things that weren't known as well, things that have appeared in the uh, Spatage books are not known previously. Um, the bigger the polity universe gets, the smaller it gets in a way. Um, can't th I can't think. How can I put it? I'm constricted by it at that point. Um, and he moves on. Do you feel any responsibility for the characters you create? As in, have you had any arguments with editors, etc., about the direction a character will go, go in, and find yourself saying, I won't do it, uh, they just wouldn't do that? No, never. Uh, that is 
it's interesting interesting that um, talking to that uh, William Gaminara, the nar narrator of the uh, Spatterjay books, I asked him what got him into writing, because he's, he's written a, a number of scripts. Um, or, you know, has he always written, or did acting lead to writing? And as he says, it's the acting led to the writing because of precisely that. Because he, he would get annoyed with things where his character wasn't, where the writing of his character wasn't what he thought it should be. Um, but that doesn't happen with me, not with the books. Uh, generally, I come up with an idea. I might write a brief description of where I'm going with it or whatever. And let them come back with a contract and say thank you very much. And then it's left to me. Um, I haven't had any real, real uh, big criticisms of what I've pro produced for them. I haven't had them turning around to me and say, oh no, can't do that with that character. It's very much a hands off thing in the writing world, as far as I know, as far as my experience of it has been. So, that was it. That's all the questions. See you in a moment.